Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Dr. Lulu Shimmick and I'll be your host today for this evening's wellness webinar, How Sugar Affects the Thyroid. I'm super excited to talk to you today about this subject. It is one of my favorites. These are a series of webinars where my goal is to educate you and empower you on things that can help you feel your best, feel the optimal best, right? Take charge of your own health and really start to feel better. So today we're going to be talking all about how sugar affects the thyroid. And thyroid is one of my specialties. And so this is an area that I can't wait to dive in with you. So let's get started. So a little bit about me, some of you might have attended previous well of the wellness webinars, or maybe this is your first one. So welcome. I'm Dr. Lulu Shemek. I'm a naturopathic physician and functional medicine practitioner. I've been seeing uh, patients since 2015, and I have been in the wellness industry for over 20 years. I'm an author. I have my own book called Detox, Nourish, and Activate, Plant and Vibrational Medicine for Energy, Mood, and Love. It's a great book. So if you haven't gotten your copy, make sure to get a copy of that. I'm also a botanical formulator. I love to work with plants and I customize my own formulas for patients so that they're very individualized to help them with their healing. I have my own podcast it's called The Genetic Genius, where I have guests from all over the world talk about alternative health and really the most up and coming medicine. So check that out. You can find that on Apple, super easy on Apple Podcasts. I also am the owner of my own clinic, Dr. Lou's Naturopathic Clinic, where I see patients virtually for telemedicine, as well as I have lots of different programs for people all over the world where they are learning about their health. I really specialize in women's health, specifically women regaining hormonal balance and vitality by discovering the root cause of dysfunction. So a lot of times it's a, a game of really figuring out what's going on. Most of my patients have chronic disease or they've been all over the place, different doctors, different practitioners. So my goal is really helping figure out what is happening, right? So you can feel your best. So today, what are we going to be talking about? Are we talking about how sugar affects the thyroid gland? So grab a notebook a pin and you can take notes and we'll dive in. Just as a little side note, you, after the webinar this evening, you will be receiving the audio as well as a meditation for the thyroid gland um, and the uh, guide that will have most of these notes in there. But I always, of course, talk about things that aren't on the slide. So that's why you might wanna take some notes. All right, let's dive in. So what are we gonna be talking about during the workshop for today? So one, how sugar damages the different systems of the body, so the different organ systems, and sugar addiction. We're going to talk about how sugar affects your thyroid health and the importance of a sugar detox and what that looks like. So thyroid health 101. Of course, if we're going to be talking about the thyroid, let's start at the beginning with the thyroid gland. So where is your thyroid gland? Most of you probably know, but let's just tune into our thyroid gland. It's an endocrine gland and it's in your neck just below your Adam's apple. And it's a butterfly shape made up of two lobes, one on either side of the trachea and the right lobe and the left lobe. You can see in this picture here, that pink area, that is the thyroid gland. And each lobe lies on one side of the windpipe. What does this thyroid do anyway? It's a complicated organ. Your thyroid or gland, I should say, your thyroid secretes two essential thyroid hormones that help the body's cells to function correctly. The first hormone is called thyroxine or T4 for short. And the second one is called triodothyronine or T3 for short. So those are the two main uh, actual hormones that the thyroid releases. It's a feedback loop system. And the, you might heard, have heard of TSH, 
thyroid stimulating hormone. This is the hormone that's released from the anterior pituitary gland in the brain that stim tells the thyroid what to do. And then the thyroid communicates back to the anterior pituitary gland. And that's one of the reasons why this is might be a more complicated system, a more complicated organ because of that. It's a feedback loop system. So sometimes when we have a feedback loop system, things can get quote unquote messed up. <laughs> Okay, so what do thyroid hormones do? They're needed for nearly every cell in the body, not just the thyroid hormones affect many multiple organs and pathways in the body. And which is why the effects of thyroid imbalance are far reaching. So thyroid problems have a significant impact, one on energy levels, weight, it's really common for people to mostly, I would say weight gain, but in hyperthyroidism, I will see weight loss problems, moods. So that can be anxiety, depression, drastic mood swings, uh, metabolism, a huge part, which we're going to talk about today, cognitive function. So that can be brain loss, uh, brain fog, memory loss, problems, concentrating, uh, periods. So that's different changes in, from a female perspective of your actual cycles and also into menopause and evening pregnancy. So there's lots and lots of different functions of the thyroid gland and it's a lovely gland, but it does control so much. And when it gets off balance, it sends us some definite messages about what's going on. It's the main thing is just, are we listening, right? So here's just a basic slide here of signs your thyroid might be in trouble feeling cold when other people do not. That's a big, having change in body temperatures, fluctuating quickly or drastically. That's a big one. Chronic constipation or loose stools. So that can also, some of these things that you'll see in the, these signs here have many other things that can cause, for example, <clears throat> With IBS, that could be a sign of chronic constipation or loose stools, and that can often be connected to the gut, and the gut is connected to the thyroid. Everything in the body is connected. Muscle weakness, muscle pain, or joint pain. Unintended weight loss or weight gain. Feeling sad or depressed, that's that mood piece. Exhaustion or nervousness. Rapid heart beat or slow heart rate. Dry skin, that's a big one. Dry and thinning hair hair loss, alopecia, a hoarse voice. So that can happen when the thyroid actually enlarges, it'll push on those vocal cords and cause a hoarse voice, a menstrual irregularities, changes in estrogen and progesterone causing the cycles to be irregular, a swollen neck. So again, having that swollen neck, having it hard to swallow and then actual feeling nodules on or over the thyroid area. It should be, it's a little bumpy because you could see from that picture, but it shouldn't be a not hard nodule. It should be very uh, smooth, so to speak. And even from left to right. These are just a few. So if you're experiencing, oops, if you're experiencing some or even oh, one of these things, or maybe all of these things, it's a really good time to check in with a practitioner and get some help. So should you get tested? I wanted to talk about this in relationship to sugar because sugar Im uh, balance and thyroid are highly connected. So should you get te tested? Uh, test, don't guess. That's always my protocol. If you've been experiencing several of those symptoms or signs that you saw in that previous slide that thyroid disease causes, it's really worthwhile to get tested. You don't want to start taking things that can like a hormone replacement therapy or herbs that can then throw off your thyroid and send everything into mayhem. It's really not a good idea. Hormones are very specific and sensitive. However, the problem with hypothyroidism is that its symptoms are really broad. Like you saw, they're all over the place and overlap with many other conditions. So it can be often missed and you might, you must get tested and have definitive results before you start any thyroid medication. That's really key. And taking thyroid medication without having a thyroid problem could be as harmful as not taking if you do. So test, don't guess for sure. 
So these, this slide here is just a summary of all of the laboratory tests that I recommend. And you can see here that there's a lot. The first um, row here, plus the second two, the, that's a common thyroid panel. It's called a cascade profile. And that's commonly, that's what I always run. I want to see the full, <laughs> I'm emphasizing that full aspect of how the thyroid is functioning. Remember I talked about in the beginning, T3 and T4, that's the actual thyroid, but TSH, which is most commonly the only thing that is tested we're only seeing a snapshot. We're only seeing how the thyroid's communicating from the pituitary gland perspective. So it's often very missed, especially if you don't run the other two here, thyroid peroxidase antibody and thyroid thyroglobulin antibody. These are showing if there's an autoimmune disease like Hashimoto's or Graves disease, you have to test those. One, make sure you're being tested for the right things. And then iron studies, I always do an iron study with ferritin. This is gonna show if there's any signs of anemia and the function of the red blood cells. Sink, selenium, and vitamin D. So those are good ones that can be tested. Vitamin A, a great one. Iodine, iodine is part of the thyroid system. So iron and iodine are part of the way the thyroid works and hemoglobin, really important to have those celiac panel. So you might be saying, why would I test the gut, Dr. Lulu? The gut is a hundred percent part of the thyroid communication system, the gut brain connection. And when we're talking about the gut, everything always stems from the gut. So always test because uh, you can see these next, the next one there is food sensitivities or IgG. Now, when we have food sensitivities in the system, it can throw off the thyroid and, and the thyroid can then think there's a problem with metabolism, inflammation, lots of downstream side effects, also toxic minerals. So I'll do a heavy metals test or or this says RBC, that's the red blood cells. And then EBV, that's Epstein-Barr virus. A lot of times, the if someone has a history of having mono in the past and the EBV or Epstein-Barr virus is still in the system, it can throw the thyroid off or throw off uh, different cyst symptoms. So if the thyroid, say you tested all these things here and the thyroid was normal, then we would have the evidence of what other systems are out of balance. So these are labs that I recommend testing for blood sugar, right? We're talking about blood sugar and how it affects the thyroid. So blood glucose, that's of course important. Your HbA1c, so this is a marker that um, I also commonly don't see a typical MD run. And as a functional medicine practitioner, I always run it. It shows us the actual function of the, red, the hemoglobin in the red blood cells in relationship to glucose over 90 days. You got to run that. And then also we have insulin. Insulin is really important as far as our blood sugar metabolism. Then we have lipids. Lipids are really key because we want to see what's going on in relationship to the fat cells in the body and sugar metabolism. And then again, you can see the ASI or autoimmune and thyroid. So those are just a few of the labs that I recommend, and you can always take some of these ideas to your current health practitioner or connect in with me. So how sugar affects the thyroid or how, I'm sorry, how sugar affects the body. So now let's talk about how sugar actually affects other organs in the body. So brain versus food. So sugar can cause your brain to have a large release of dopamine. And you probably are familiar with dopamine. Dopamine is that you just can't eat one, right? You just want to have more and more because it makes you feel so good. So dopamine works with the regulators in your brain. And when large amounts are released, these regulators are dulled. And this means that it takes more and more sugar or some other thing that you're eating like potato chips or something for the and triggering those neurotransmitters. So it means it takes more and more of that thing or more sugar to get the same feeling as the first time. That's why we overdo it. So for example, so where a cupcake, small cupcake might have been enough for you over time, it will take two or more to get that same feeling. So it just backfires and you know, there are lots of things we're going to talk about. So one thing I want to make really clear is that dopamine, this neurotransmitter inhibits TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. So thyroid stimulating hormone can lead to 
hyperthyroidism when it's inhibited. So huge aspects. So again, we're, we're like looking at the bigger picture. Okay. If I'm eating a lot of sugar, it's actually triggering more of dopamine in my system to be released. And then dopamine is telling that inhibiting the release of TSH causing hyperthyroidism. So really um, a bad trigger for the body or a detrimental trigger, I should say. Okay. False energy. A lot of the aspects of the system, especially when it comes to one sugar and you may have sugar, it causes these dips in blood sugar. And the thyroid is all about energy. So sugar can give you a sense of energy or a sense of having energy. Like when you would get from an energy shot, like a boost, like a shot of espresso or natural energy from your body, the thyroid gland. And the truth is when we get it from sugar, it's total false energy. I'm talking about really like artificial sugar, not a nice, a wholesome piece of fruit. Sugar gives your body this rush, right? That allows you to get a small boost. And then when this boost is gone, it's already left the scene. You have a sugar crash right? that you have a really deep crash of energy. And this crash can leave you feeling tired, or it can leave you feeling tired along with having a migraine or even lightheadedness because you can have a change in your blood pressure. And this crash is hard to get over. And in some cases can leave you with no alternative, but to end your day and get some rest, take a nap, or you just tell your family like, Hey, I've had it. I got to go lay down. And you don't want to have that. And then, and if you're having this feeling consistently, it's a really good time to have your thyroid checked or other things. Like I talked about other blood sugar levels. So studies have shown um, that when you have that insulin spike caused by high sugar intake. So say you're, you, you had three or four cupcakes or maybe just one. But if you're having a habit, a sugar actual addiction, that sugar then intake increases the destruction of the thyroid gland in people, especially with Hashimoto's disease. So sugar is really detrimental on um, autoimmune thyroid diseases because of the inflammatory cascade. So how does sugar affect your adrenal glands? So your adrenal glands are the two glands or two organs that are right above the kidneys. They sit on top of the kidneys like little hats. And blood sugar management is an ever-increasing problem. We have a diabetic epidemic um, in the United States. And diet is a considerable factor in blood sugar levels, as I've talked about already. But something that gets overlooked in the discussion is your adrenal glands, which control or manage or modulate your energy. And so these little tiny, small, but mighty glands, they play a huge role in both high and low blood sugar. So they regulate salt, sugar and sex. That's the role of the adrenal system. So salt is about aldosterone in our blood sugar or our blood pressure regulator. And then we have sugar. It balances cortisol in our blood sugar. And then also the sex, it balances sex hormones, progesterone and estrogen and testosterone. So it's really important here because what you can see is that when we have a so the adrenal glands are, are energy and they're controlled or maintained by cortisol. And so when we have this, we're in a, a place of stress, maybe you have a habit of eating more sugar or more carbs that transfer into sugar when you're stressed out, which is very common. When we have that place of stress, what then happens is in the body, that adrenal gland takes over and we have, we go into a state of blood sugar imbalance because it's trying to balance the blood sugar, balance the blood sugar, but it can't because it's trying to balance the energy, balance the energy, right? So you have all kinds of downstream effects. So the adrenal system and the thyroid are part of the HPA axis which is the hypopituitary axis. So it's the pituitary gland, the hypothalamus, which tells the pituitary gland what to do, which tells the adrenal, adrenal glands what to do. So we have, that's like a little separate system. And then within that, we have the thyroid, that thyroid feedback loop. So you can see there's, the hormonal system is very um, complicated. It's a lot of different things involved. So again, one of the primary functions of cortisol, which is the main hormone of the adrenal system is to help you balance your blood sugar. So overstimulation. 
I love this little picture of the brain here, of the heart, right? And then these gears, like your brain is all about love and then function, right? It's always working, even we, it's a, working behind the scenes. We don't know it. So sugar addiction causes an overstimulation of the system. So the whole body is, is stimulated. It causes your body to have a reaction and that can make you like jumpy or anxious, or you can't sleep at night or you're, you have the jitters. There's all kinds of things that can be overstimulated in the system can at first be confused with just being excited or energetic, right? You're like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to do that. But then actually you're overstimulated. And the problem is that you need to have more and more sugar to get that same reaction. So you're like, oh, I, I love having that energy. It feels so good. And you're like, and you're like, oh, I just crash. I think we'll have more of that. So again, that's that dopamine effect coming in. And this is it ties directly to the dopamine and how your brain reacts. So just as a little summary here, the more sugar you consume, equals more dopamine equals less TSH production. So that's the thyroid stimulating production, the thyroid stimulating hormone, remember coming from the anterior pituitary gland and, or stimulation from the anterior pituitary gland. So it's a, a, a complicated system, but yet simple, basically <laughs> sugar equals you could say failure of the adrenal and the pituitary and a thyroid system overstimulation over it's, oh, it has to be overworked. It gets taxed because it doesn't ever turn off overstimulated. So thyroid dangers of being addicted to sugar. So let's talk about some of the things that are really a problem for the thyroid. So sugar. Now I love this picture here. Now, this is healthy sugar, but in a smoothie, we hope, right. But smoothies can also have a lot of sugar that you want to make sure if you're taking, for example, a, a protein or a smoothie mix you're adding into your smoothies, you want to make sure you're checking that sugar content on the labels and you're not getting lots of extra sugar into the system, or you're adding tons of fruit into your smoothie. And you're, maybe you're using like lots of bananas and lots of other high sugar fruits. And then you're getting way too much sugar for the system. You want to have that balance throughout the day. So yeah, look for, if you need some recommendation of specific good smoothies, please let me know. I can send you some of those. Okay. So <clears throat> you may think sugar addiction, again, is something that only has side effects such as obesity. That's the most common one that we hear about or diabetes. And the truth is there's many other dangers related to being addicted to sugar. And these dangers can cause a variety of health issues issues in your daily life. It can have lots of downstream side effects like I've been talking about. And in fact, you may not even realize what foods are, are sources of the sugar are causing the addiction, right? Because sugar is hidden in so many foods, so many uh, drinks, so many things in our diet, especially if you're not used to reading labels. I always recommend shopping on the outside aisles of the grocery store where you're not buying a lot of processed foods. But if you are buying some like crackers or anything in those middle aisles, make sure you're reading those boxes and you're reading what that sugar content is on the label. You don't want to be adding in it because it all accumulates over time. So here are a few dangers to consider where the hidden sources might be located because that's really key. And what do you do to reduce each danger risk? So migraines, migraines, I have so many female patients who have migraine problems and sugar can be a huge part component. I see a sugar imbalance, like having low blood sugar crashes, also caffeine consumption. That's a huge one with migraines, uh, B complex, not having enough B vitamins especially as we age and we reduce our intrinsic factor, which helps us absorb B vitamins. And then also hormonal imbalance, whether you're in your cycling phase or in your pre-menopause or menopausal phase, those, all those can cause migraines and stress. So ah, migraines, when you eat a large amount of sugar, so we're talking about the sugar perspective, your brain is going to react to that sugar. Remember that dopamine, and this can cause a number of reactions, including energy bursts. And when this happens, your regulators are dulled over time, right? 
that dopamine response gets dulled. And this means that you're not feeling the full effects of the sugar, like I mentioned, and what it is doing to your system because it's, it's so dulled. It also means that the more and more sugar is needed over time to give you that energy, give you that need, fill that need for sugar and energy. <clears throat> and when you do not have the amounts of sugar, your body has become used to. So these cells, basically the cells in the body, you're feeding them sugar. They're basically like little sugar monsters. And when you don't give them what they want, they tell you that they don't like it in a really big way. And migraines is a huge one that we'll see a side effect of. And if you already get a headache, so you're really prone to them, you may notice it's a, a severe increase in these headaches and the headaches get worse don't have sugar or caffeine or a lot of carbs. So again, studies have shown that a history of migraine headaches may predispose a person to hypothyroidism. So that's huge, right? So we're seeing the thyroid when is being affected by blood sugar. We're seeing the thyroid is being affected by actual migraines and history of having a lot of headaches and migraines. So again, we're putting that the pieces of those puzzle together. So here, hypertension, I see this as huge aspect of we have talking about uh, metabolic syndrome, which is obesity, diabetes, and hyper high blood pressure all into one. So we're seeing that also with the thyroid system and hypertension. So that's high blood pressure. This is a severe danger with a sugar addiction. It's huge component. And this danger refers to the increased amount of high blood pressure in the system, right? So high blood, blood pressure, of course, can lead to heart attacks, strokes, and circulation issues throughout the body. It can also cause your blood vessels, those actual blood vessels or arteri arteries or arterial system to become smaller, right? They become clogged with plaque. And they become narrower, which affects your entire system and the circulation moving through the actual blood to the thyroid gland, the blood to the gut, the blood to the brain, everything becomes affected when we have high blood pressure. So even just by reducing a small amount of sugar, for example, omitting sugary drinks, um, you can avoid this danger and reduce the, the risk. So if you already have high blood pressure and also low blood pressure. Both of things, these things are affected. The thyroid gland and, the, and low blood pressure and high blood pressure are highly connected. So if you already have some of these things happening and then you're eating a lot of sugar, or even if you're eating sugar in ways you don't realize, but your overall intake of caloric intake is um, high in sugar, you're going to see a definite shift in the way that your body responds to blood pressure. So both types of hype of thyroid disorder. So we have hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism. And we also have our autoimmune conditions, Graves and Hashimoto's I mentioned before, these can lead to um, hypertension. And though they get there in different ways, right? So we have different ways that the thyroid works when with hypo and hyperthyroidism. Hyperthyroidism increases your heart rate and makes your heart work harder. Lots of times women will feel and men will feel palpitations with hyperthyroidism and high blood pressure. And while hypothyroidism weakens the heart muscle and makes it less efficient. So sometimes we'll see that low blood pressure component. That's what I was saying. We can see both sides of that coin and about this number I actually think has changed since the study, but about 3% of people with hypertension, so that's high blood pressure, have thyroid disorder. And it's called secondary hypertension, where the, hyper, the thyroidism is actually causing the high blood pressure. <clears throat> and in those cases, the usual medications for treating blood pressure don't help lower blood pressure because the root cause of the thyroid issue is, uh, or the root cause of the blood pressure is not the cardiovascular system, but it's a thyroid system. So then we're treating the underlying root cause of the thyroid condition, along with nutritional evaluation can just be really helpful. Okay. So let's talk about metabolic issues or AKA the thyroid, right? So the thyroid is all about metabolism. You can think of the thyroid as being like the mother of metabolism. So one of the, or the father, right? It's like the queen or king of the kingdom when it comes to metabolism. 
one of the dangers that most people do not consider are the effects sugar addictions have on your metabol metabolic system. So these dangers include fat deposits in your cells, and that can be huge cause of obesity, weight loss, and problems with the way your, your cells function. You can think of it if you have a cell that's supposed to be normally functioning. We have different organelles like mitochondria within that cell. If we have actual fat deposits inside, the cell is not going to function properly. You're going to have DNA problems. You're going to have uh, detoxification problems. You're going to have energy problems. So metabolism, actually, when it starts to dysfunction, we actually have a lot of problems with the inside of the cell, particularly. And it also causes fat deposits in the blood. We definitely don't want that. And this causes circulation problems, plaque buildup, blood flow difficulty, like I mentioned with the narrowing of the arteries, especially with hypertension dangers that can already be present. So it's a huge aspect there. And the thyroid gland is associated with metabolism and eating excess sugar. And this causes a downstream effect of a, like a double whammy, right? Of low metabolism, because you're already, you're having the thyroid is not working properly. And then you're having that low metabolism. And then you have low thyroid hormone in the bloodstream or hypothyroidism. So not a good combination. So let's talk about, I was supposed to say reproductive there. <laughs> Sorry about that. Instead of repo, oh no, it does say reproductive. I read it. <laughs> Sorry about that. Reproductive hormones and the thyroid. So let's talk about those because they're completely connected. Like I mentioned before, remember the adrenal system is part of your home hormonal system with estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone, but also we have our thyroid system with the thyroid hormones. So hormonal imbalance. I love this picture here, right? Your home hormone levels are maximum, right? It's like way off the chart. So sugar, if you're thinking about sugar, a diet high in sugar can have significant effects on the reproductive hormones and can help explain the link between conditions such as PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, a huge one when it comes to hormonal imbalance. And sugar is intrinsically linked to estrogen, uh, a hormone responsible for many processes in the body. And so estrogen specifically has many beneficial effects, right? We need it as men and women. It's very important for the body, including regulating the reproductive system. We know that one as well as helping optimize the action of insulin. So it actually helps us with our blood sugar balancing, just like the thyroid and the adrenal system and the hormone that prevents high blood sugar level. That's insulin. Most people don't think of, of estrogen as being one of our hormone regulators or blood sugar reg regulators, but it totally is. So estrogen, the connection between estrogen and thyroid health is hard to ignore, right? Because it's right there. We can see it in the way the organs function. And when you consider that women are eight to 10 times more likely than men to be diagnosed with a thyroid condition, it should be on everybody's radar because as women, we have lots of changes in our cycles from age now we're seeing even earlier, but let's say age 12, all the way through your seventies, you can still have lots of changes in your hormonal levels. And so it's important for us to have the thyroid working properly and balanced. And women are also at an increased risk of thyroid problems during transitionary times, pregnancy, postpartum and menopause and implementing sex hormones in the development of thyroid conditions can be helpful, but also can be detrimental if the whole um, system is not uh, connected. Okay. And so here I'll, I posted a study here. This is a particular study that's referencing the information up here. And you can look that up if you'd like, there's actually two different studies. Okay, let's talk about progesterone. So this is a really important major hormone in our system. So progesterone deficiency is another common hormone imbalance, right? We hear estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. Those are our three main hormones that we hear from the reproductive perspective. And if progesterone levels are consistently low, 
then this leads to relative estrogen dominance. So if you're not familiar with that term, that means that when the progesterone levels are low, that we have an increase of estrogen because they work on this kind of scale between each other. We have progesterone on one side, we have estrogen and testosterone on the other. And if those progesterone levels are low, it increases the estrogen and the testosterone levels, specifically estrogen. We'll see that. So that's really common, especially um, in women in their forties um, and up estrogen dominance is very common. And so I always run a hormone panel when it's in relationship to the thyroid. And if you're estrogen dominant, your thyroid hormones get bound up by thyroxine binding globulin or TBG. So another, that's another test often commonly used. So what happens is um, these thyroid, you could think of them as being like stuck together and they can't be released to help the thyroid function properly. And so this reduces the number of available thyroid hormones resulting in symptoms of hypothyroidism. So even if you make enough thyroid hormones, so you're making it, you're making it, then you, but your hormones, your progesterone, um, estrogen and testosterone levels are off. Your thyroid is still going to be functioning poorly. So let's talk about the dangers of being addicted to sugar. And I've already mentioned a lot of this, but now let's go a little bit more into detail. So here, you've been working on your diet and your nutrition and you're doing really well, right? You're like, oh, I've been working so hard. I've been really healthy. I've been eating a clean diet. You're even, maybe you're walking or running, doing some five K's and exercise groups, but you've been told by your nutritionist or a doctor or myself or another health practitioner that your sugar levels are still not in a good range. You're like, what, how can that be? I'm doing everything. And this is really common and frustrating. I hear it from patients like, ah, oh, I've tried everything. So what happens? is that you have hidden sugar. And these are some, on these four blocks here, these are the things that are common, hidden, commonly hidden in uh, sugar, or sugar is commonly hidden in these. You've removed soda, processed sugars, and sweets. Now you're left like when wondering like, where are the sugars coming from? So here are a few hidden sources of sugar and what you need to do to remove them. So one, coffee drinks. This is a huge one. As you Starbucks is like all around and other coffee shops, even young teenagers are getting sugared coffee drinks that they're taking to school. Right. And so the sugar is heavily hidden in coffee drinks. Um, people like things sweet. It covers up that bitterness of the sugar, uh, pre-made juices. So not making your own juice, but buying something that's pre-made all that it's being filtered. So that filter, the uh, actual, that pulp is really important for that part of the juice when you make your own, because it adds that substance and it helps us to have that fiber, which actually helps the sugar to move through the system. Frozen dinners, tons of different flavor additives and sugar in those. If you're eating frozen dinners, please cut those out. Not good for you. And you know, what I recommend if you don't have the time, which we're all busy, right? Make a big pot of something or get together with a couple of friends and make dinners and freeze them. So you have them when you're in pre-made health drinks. So I'm talking about like if you're buying that pre-made smoothie or something in the juice department or in the drink department, those things are loaded with sugar and additives. How do we quit sugar? Because as I mentioned, you saw all the things we saw the thyroid is affected. Our brain is affected. Our hormones are affected. Our metabolism is affected. Uh, our weight is affected. We have so many systems and sleep. I didn't even talk a lot about sleep, but sleep is hugely affected by sugar. And I did a little bit. That's the cortisol component, right? So cortisol um, and melatonin are um, synergists in the way that they cooperate or they're, they work together. So if your cortisol is off balance because you're stressed and you have too much sugar in your system, your body is trying to balance that your melatonin is going to not be balanced, which is cause you to have insomnia. <laughs> also, if you're eating a lot of sugared sweets because of the dopamine release at night, that can also cause you to have poor sleep patterns. And uh, studies have shown that 75% of Americans have sleep disorders. And that is huge. So there's lots of different components of that. The screen time is a huge one. So I'm seeing 
I would say almost all my patients have some sort of sleep disorder, whether that's insomnia or they're, they wake up at different times of the night and they can go back to sleep, but they're not fully rested. You got to have that full restorative sleep where you're getting deep sleep. So anyway, that's a whole nother <laughs> a PowerPoint for this webinar is sleep, a big one. Okay. Stages of quitting sugar. So one, removing known sugars. And these are the ones that you're probably like familiar with. So the first step to quitting sugar is to remove all the known sugars from your diet. Number one, this means removing drinks, even diet drinks that contain sugars. Artificial sweeteners are really toxic. I do not re recommend drinking them. It was funny. I was at this coffee shop the other day in line. We went to the football game and there was a couple in front of me with their dog and the man was letting the dog eat out of this cup and it was filled with ice cream. And this woman next to him said, isn't it, you know, bad for your dog to eat ice cream? And he said, um, no, it's okay. As long as it's a, a healthy ice cream, it doesn't have any artificial sugars aren't good for dogs. I'm like, duh, they're not good for humans either. They cause cancer. You should not be drinking diet drinks, diet sodas, uh, diet gum, diet, anything. It's not good. It's not a whole food and it causes their carcinogens. So anyway, that's my soapbox about that. But you also want to remove sugars that are artificial because they cause health risks and thyroid dangers. Oops. Um, sorry. <clears throat> so remove processed foods that contain high sugar contents as well. And by just removing known sugars from your diet, you can reduce the amount of risks and sugars that are causing your health issues. So this is really key. And what I recommend is just go through your pantry, go through your refrigerator. You are moving into the holiday season. This is a time you don't want to stock up on your sugar sweets, but I actually want to eliminate them to allow you to have a better healthy holiday and move into 2022 with a positive note. And sugars add a lot of uh, problems with the thyroid, like we mentioned, metabolism and weight gain. So this may seem like the simplest step, removing sugars from your diet, looking through the pantry, et cetera. But honestly, it can be the hardest step for people to make because they're like, oh, I don't know what to drink now. I've been so used to drinking this X, Y, Z drink. And you know, how do I replace it? water <laughs> is a good replacement. Sparkling water. If you need something sparkling, you can use like a soda stream to make some sparkling water. You can make lemon water to help your body detox. Water is what we are made of. We need to have a lot of water. Okay. So detoxing, here's that lemon I was just talking about. So the second step, so one, you want to remove sugars from your system Two, detox. You have to have daily detox. You need to do a cleanse that removes the buildup from your metabolic and endocrine system. So that can be daily or more intensive. I'm after the webinar this evening, I'm going to, when I resend, I send you all the goodies. <laughs> I'm going to send you a little five day sugar detox. It's super easy. That way you can just go through and get a little reboot. If you need something longer, connect with me, can you my longer genetic detox program, which is but just a good detox, but you really need to be removing. So detox that sugar from the system five to seven days and then keep it out. That's key. Don't add it back in. So you need one day, maybe you need three days, maybe you need five days, maybe you need a month. How addicted are you? better than anyone, right? What your sugar intake is and how addicted. One day can be really helpful. For me, I like to do one cleanse day a week, like where I'm eating really, I eat healthy anyway, but I'm talking about reducing any of the inflammatory foods and drinking a lot of lemon water all through the day to help me detox. And I'll go to the detox sauna in Asheville or where if you're somewhere else local to you, where you're really detoxing the system at least once a month. But once a day is good for doing that lemon water and eating lighter foods, reducing the inflammatory foods, which are sugar, <laughs> corn, gluten, eggs. Those are just some of the main. A soy, that's also a big one. So one of the ways, of course, is to do a clean eating diet or nutritional plan that gives you good food, solid nutrition and vitamins. So once you go through this process, you can move on to that healthy diet. Like you're like, okay, I've eliminated it. 
the one program I like, the Whole30 program, really, really have good information about how the neurotransmitters work. So that's why sometimes a 30 day, you need that 30 day reset because you, when we eat a lot of sugar, it's communicating with the neurotransmitters in our brain. And we've got to change that hormonal pattern to change that sugar addiction and to change that sugar message. And you might be thinking to yourself, I don't think I'm addicted to sugar, but really, I want you to really dig deep here. Are you addicted to carbs? Are you addicted to coffee drinks? There's lots of things and addiction doesn't mean that I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying it's something that you need to identify and look deeper to see, is it contributing to some uh, underlying health conditions? So again, I'm going to send you that sweet sugar detox handout. Okay. Side effects of sugar. (laughs) Look at that piece of chocolate there. There are certain side effects that you need to prepare for when you're doing a detox. So this is just a simple one, but one of the most common is headaches because your body, you're starving those cells that you've been communicating with them. Like, Hey, I love you. I'm going to give you some coffee. Hey, I love you. I'm going to give you the uh, cupcake or, Hey, I love you. I'm going to give you a piece of bread. And so when you say you take that away, it's like starving that little cell and it gives a little tantrum back and gives you a headache because you're trying to detox from the system. So headaches from the lack of stimulation and sugar, that's like energy boost, right? With a crash that can start with the same day can become increasingly painful. If you are doing the five day sugar detox, or maybe you're just doing it one day or even a longer 30 day, just increase your water intake. And remember that the first three days of any kind of detox, you're just going to feel a little bit yucky because you're moving those toxins out of the system. It's just part of it. So drinking extra water, a ton of extra water, it helps you to flush things out. And one way you can deal with headaches are their natural methods is meditation is really good. Essential oils are really good. And this can help reduce the effects and you can get through those headaches quickly. So tips for getting through sugar cravings. So sugar cravings are the hardest part of starting a new healthy routine. So this is especially true if you have are are dealing with a sugar addiction related to hidden sugar in your foods or high levels of sugar in your daily diet. Have an alternative, something healthy, smell instead of tasting and drink infused water. So I, how to make lemon water. If you haven't, if you're drinking daily lemon water, this is really key. So uh, make a single glass of lemon water. You need about a fourth a cup of water, juice from half a lemon and about a third of cup of boiling water added in. Uh, You add the lemon juice to your empty glass first. Using a lemon reamer or handheld juicer, you extract as much of that lemon juice as you can. And this is going to increase its concentration. And then you add the cold water and the boiling water to the glass. And this kind of makes it warm. Um, you can also just use straight up tap water if you don't want to do the cold and warm, but you really need, you don't want to add just cold water. Uh, you could also add, like I said here, just add lemon juice to a glass of warm water, but that's just another method. You can try out different things. If you're having cold lemon water, add the juice of a lemon to a glass of cold water or you can follow directions further down in this report, okay? You can also add lemon zest. So another great thing to do is when you're making lemon water, just zest that lemon right into a glass or pitcher of water. And this is great because you then you have all of the extra goodies from the lemon. Okay, nutrition in the thyroid. So how nutrition affects the thyroid. So diet has a tremendous potential as a trigger or stressor in most all health conditions. So too many calories, right? Eating things that are out of your caloric range. If you're not sure what that is, you can do a quick BMI to see where you're at with your BMI range. See if you're in an overweight category and that can show if you're getting too many calories or you can keep track in a calorie counter. There's tons of those too. Too few calories or foods that mess with blood sugar, alcohol or processed foods, and even healthy foods. If we are reactive to them, If you have a food intolerance, remember I talked about doing food allergy testing in the beginning, these can mess with thyroid function. And while it's okay to have that occasional indulgence, actually I encourage it because you don't want to cut yourself off from happiness and joy. You got to have it, but you want to focus on eating real foods. So let's look at what that looks like. So eat this. These are the foods that make your thyroid happy, healthy fats. So we're talking about ghee and uh, eggs and fats from 
grazed animals, raw and unrefined coconut oil, avocados, raw seeds and nuts. Those are all healthy fats that help your thyroid. Thyroid is a gland, so it needs healthy fats. Ocean vegetables, spirulina, chlorella, kelp, and nori. These are part of the detoxification ocean vegetables and help your body and thyroid to function better. Organic fruits, so low sugar berries, uh, green apples, etc. Any of those fruits that are low sugar content. And you can do a search for that if you're not sure. Of course, like you probably know the ones that are higher in sugar and content, like a banana. Organic vegetables, all vegetables, especially the cruciferous family. Those are going to be your broccoli, kale, cabbage, etc. Organic grass fed and pasture raised and really important to be getting that when it comes to your animal protein, if you're eating animal protein, probiotic foods, uh, cultured vegetables, beet kvass and keep wild caught low mercury seafood. A really great resource is the EWDG, EWG.org. You can look on there for their seafood And it will tell you everything about what seafood has high content of toxins and what, and make recommendations of what to eat and not to eat. So that's a great resource. E W G like a George.org. Okay. Now what not to eat for the thyroid gland caffeinated drinks. I mentioned how these can really be bad. You don't want to be stimulating a system that's, that's distressed conventional meat, a big no-no because they have added hormones. This affects the whole thyroid and hormonal system. Alcoholic beverages. Yes. Even one beverage messes with the hormones. Conventional dairy is the number one source of dietary estrogen causing estrogen dominance. Fast foods, high salt, sugar, chemicals, If you're going to, if you need to eat out, try to make healthy choices and that's going to be challenging, but the best thing is not to, when it comes to fast food, eating out is okay. You can still make healthy choices there. Gluten and processed grains, huge inflammatory aspect when it comes to the thyroid gland. They, and they also cause intestinal permeability, which causes the leaky gut. And that's a whole nother issue I can talk about. And I think I have some of that on the, on my website. If you go to my website, doclulu.com under the learn tab, you can access all of my past webinars and, and all of the recordings and the handouts there. So that's a great way. And there's lots of things about the gut and hormones, all kinds of great stuff for you. Okay. GMO foods, ooh, a big, no, uh, they do genetically modified foods are really poor for the thyroid. It needs organic, healthy foods, nothing with toxins and chemicals. Industrialized cooking oils. Oh God, these are so bad. Canola, corn, soy, they're super inflammatory, causing your whole body to be in a state of inflammation. Processed foods. They don't have any nutritional value. (laughs) Sorry, if it comes in a box, it's probably really low, unless it's like rice. If it's been a process, rice is not a processed food. I'm talking about something that has been made into something else, right? Like crackers. Refined sugar, of course, we went all through this, messes with blood sugar, bad for the thyroid. So these are some essential oils and herbs that are really beneficial for the thyroid. So ashwagandha, a great one for the thyroid. I would say that's probably my number one. Bladder rack, that's another good one. And coleus. So those are the three, my three favorites when it comes to boosting the thyroid. And I love these herbs for the thyroid. Frankincense is a really good one. You can just use it even as a roll on straight on top of the thyroid gland. It really helps to decrease inflammation. Lemongrass, wonderful as a blend or in a diffuser and lavender, especially if you have a lot of, you're on that hyperthyroid state where you're just going, you can't seem to turn down the volume. Supplements for blood sugar balance. So these, if you're having a lot of thyroid issues and blood sugar issues, like, and so if you're doing, especially if you're in metabolic syndrome where you're having obesity, you're also having high blood pressure and these can really help. So obesity, high blood pressure and diabetes or pre-diabetes, that's metabolic syndrome. So green tea, taking it as a supplement. ALA, alpha lipoic acid, magnesium, great for balancing blood sugar, also chromium, uh, NRF2, and probiotics. All those will help bring down blood sugar. Also, uh, berberine supplements, which are Oregon grapefruit and golden seal. 
So lifestyle. So really when it comes to lifestyle, I'm I put this out there. It's really not negotiable when it comes to the thyroid, a healthy lifestyle and the right mindset is essential for optimal thyroid. And if you think about back through the webinar today, about all the things that I discussed, you can see why, right? The thyroid does so many things. We need it so desperately in our body. And so it's not negotiable. You've got to have the mindset. You need to um, shift your environment, shift your daily routine to make time for self-care. So running or into ground into the ground with work does not help your thyroid doesn't do any favors so take walks go to yoga get a massage relax on the patio with friends have a nice mocktail with some healthy herbs create a happy lifestyle with minimal stress meditation and i'm going to send out a meditation i'm going to do it for you tomorrow and i'll send it out with all the goodies and so that is a great thing to start working on Actually, I don't like to say those, that phrase, start working on. That is a great thing to start assimilating into your life to align your thyroid for better health. Okay, so let's wrap up today. We went over so much great information, right? We talked about the way that blood sugar balances or imbalances the systems of the body. We also talked about how sugar affects the thyroid gland. And then we also talked about how important it is to detox sugar from the system. And I'm going to send you a great little five-day sugar detox for that. So I wanted to make, let you know that I have a wonderful 30-day thyroid recovery program coming up. It's going to be starting in January, but now is a great time to sign up because I have a limited amount of people that can take that program at the same time. And let's talk about what the benefits are of this program. It's absolutely amazing. So if you're exhausted, <laughs> gaining weight and moody, or maybe you just plain feel like crap. <laughs> you've been to all the doctors, you've been poked, prodded, tested, but nothing has changed. The medicines and treatments haven't done anything. This is a perfect thyroid program for you. What's included? So you get my two amazing thyroid recovery guides, which includes a hormone reset and a hormone mindset. You get my expert thyroid protocol. You also get to re a regain your thyroid power guide because the thyroid is all about power, especially as women. It's what we, how we communicate, how we express ourselves. So important and so key to thyroid health. You get a free 30 minute visit with me, or you get, it's included <laughs> uh, to discuss recommendations and labs for thyroid health. It comes with a whole 30 day um, meal plan with recipes and guides, omnivore and or vegetarian bonus handouts. So you're going to get a going grain free. You get a hormone and detox probiotics and hormones teas for liver detox and thyroid balancing foods. You get a gratitude journal and a law of attraction planner. Woo -woo. And you get weekly manifestation med meditations and you get group support. It's a group program where everyone is talking about their thyroid health and what's working and how they need help. Sounds amazing. I can't wait to do it myself. <laughs> so uh, the 30 day thyroid recovery program, it's really time to reclaim your health from your thyroid disease. And the cost of the entire program is only $3.99 for all those goodies. And an early bird bonus, if you shine up, sign up for the workshop, or sorry, sign up for the recovery program, a bonus early bird for all attendees tonight. You get $100 off the program plus my five-week mindset reset course, which you could start um, immediately once you get signed up. I'll send that to you. And it's an amazing course because part of the thyroid is mindset, right? That lifestyle component. You if you want to sign up, you use the coupon thyroid power, and I'm going to send all that out tomorrow. So you'll have the link to sign up super, super easy. And you want to sign up now. So you don't miss the early bird. And the program is going to start on January 17th, 2022, pretty much 90 days, three months from now, because you don't want to start something during the holidays. I thought about, Hey, let's start it in December, but you know what? You're just not ready. You want to start it in January where you're like really great for moving forward. You're like geared to having the best you.
So thanks everyone for attending tonight. I hope you learned so much. There was a lot of information. If you need more information and education, I mentioned you can visit my website and there's the link there, www.doclulu.com. Doc Lulu, what's up doc? And so from there, you can find all more of my free webinars that are there. Also my YouTube station or channel has them there too. Make sure you're following me on Instagram because I have tons of health tips, recipes, free webinars, programs, and more. You don't want to miss out. And then also don't forget to listen to my weekly podcast, the genetic genius Sub subscribe and so you can make sure you don't miss out on all the great guests that we have coming up. And I'm almost going to reach 100 episodes and I'll be reaching that in 2022, which is super exciting. All right. Well, thank you everyone for attending.